Good time of the day, everyone. My name is Alex, and this is a Generative AI Crash Course. Today, we will develop a deep understanding of the transformer architecture, which consists of encoder, decoder. We will review how to join a transformer and discuss next steps. Transformer is the current basis of all modern LLMs, like BERT, Gemini, ChatGPT, and other top performing models. Currently, the dominant models for nearly all natural language processing and computer video tasks are based on the transformer architecture. Your RNNs, CNNs, and other simpler models lost the performance battle, unfortunately. Given any new task, the default approach is to grab a large transformer-based pre-trained model, for example, BERT, LAMA, GPT, or API like Gemini, ChatGPT, etc., and enhance it with a context, applying retrieval augmented generation or RAG, or adapt the output layers as necessary and fine-tune the model on the available data for the downstream task. Note that the latter, I mean fine-tuning, is possible only when the model weights and architecture as a code are available. In other words, you cannot fine-tune API. These models are known as transformers because they transform inputs such as text, images, video, or audio into a corresponding set of vectors with the same dimensionality. The goal of the transformation is for the new unified vector representation to the right to have a richer internal representation that is better suited for solving downstream tasks, such as classification, summarization, chatting, and text generation, object detection, and others. Think of a transformer as a mixer. A mixer transformer blends fruits and vegetables inputs into a smoothie, a unified vector representation. Multimodal transformers can combine multiple data types, such as text, images, and audio. Transformer-based architectures are so popular because they beat modern benchmarks in the majority of AI tasks. They also outperform all CNNs and RNNs in the majority of tasks, such as classification, segmentation, object detection, and others. They have the property of multimodality. Multimodality is ability of these models to blend text, audio, video, and more in one model. So you don't need separate models and inputs for different types of data. You can throw everything into one and it will output embeddings and you will be able to fit these embeddings to downstream tasks. Another significant property is self-supervised pre-training on a large end unlabeled data. The resulting demand for annotated data is much lower because the pre-trained model needs much less data to train. These models can capture large data sets. For example, ChatGPT4 context window is 128,000 tokens, while classical LSTM can capture around 200 tokens. Generative models also can be massively trained in parallel on GPUs in reasonable time due to the specifics architecture of which we will talk a little bit later. Also, uh, a significant property are emergent properties. Those are capabilities that arise from the complex interactions within the model, even though models were not explicitly programmed or trained for those specific tasks. For example, GPT and Gemini models have been trained to predict the next token in a sequence of tokens, and that's it. But they're actually capable of performing arithmetic, answering questions, summarizing texts, and more. This picture here shows the overall architecture of the transformer presented by Vasvani, which we will use as a primary example today. As you see, the transformer is composed of an encoder and decoder. Both encoder and decoder involve multiple components working together, such as linear, softmax, feedforward, embeddings, normalization, and attention layers. The input, source, and the output, target, sequence embeddings are added with positional 
encoding here before being fed up into the encoder and the decoder. It is important to preserve positional relations between tokens. The encoder to the left here consists of two major repeated modules, a multi-headed self-attention with pulling and a position-wise feed-forward network with residual connections and layer normalization. As you see here, these blocks stacked multiple times. The decoder is actually similar to encoder. It's also a stack of multiple identical layers with residual connections and layer normalizations. In addition to the two sublayers that you already saw in encoder, namely position-wise feed-forward network and masked multi-headed self-attention, decoder have encoder-decoder attention, which is located between dimension two. Let's talk about the encoder and its components in more detail now. As you see, the encoder consists of position-wise feed-forward network, residual connections, multi-headed self-attention, and positional encoding that remember position of each token in a sequence for each vocabulary token. We will revisit each of these components and review them using the source code for complete implementation clarity. The position-wise feed-forward network transforms the representation at all the sequence positions using the same multi-layer perceptron. This is why we call it position-wise. Here you can see its um, source code, two layers with a nonlinear activation between them, and that's it. The secret is that it performs many predictions for every vocabulary token at each step of a sequence. Since the same MLP transforms at all the positions, the inputs and the positions are the same, their outputs are also identical. So at every step, this for feedforward network, input and output are same. Let's review the add and norm component. This is a residual connection immediately followed by the layer normalization. As we know, Residual connections help with fading gradients in long sequences. In other words, they are essential for having long context windows. So the network doesn't forget previous tokens and context. This element here, layer normalization. You're probably familiar with batch normalization. Batch normalization recenters and rescales across the samples within a mini batch. Layer normalization is the same as batch normalization, except that it normalizes across the feature dimension, thus enjoying the benefits of scale independence and batch size independence. And dropout, of course, dropout is applied for regularization. Here in front of you, you can see a single layer of a transformer encoder block. This single block contains multiple attention heads, which is a controlled number of heads controlled by a parameter num heads here you can see and you can see location of the block itself the transformer encoder block is a class in a code snippet it's a single chunk of encoder it contains two sublayers multi-headed self-attention here add norm a normalization layer that we talked about and position wise fit forward network the actual encoder consists of multiple transformer and encoder blocks that you can see here. So those blocks that you saw on the previous slide are repeated multiple times, controlled by a parameter num blocks. You can also see here other components such as embeddings, positional encodings. Here we can see how the encoder layer instantiated. We will see this code later as a part of the transformer architecture. 200 is the size of a vocabulary, 24 is number of hidden layers in encoder. 48 is number of hidden layers of feed-forward neural network, which is a part of an encoder. 8 is number of attention heads. And 2 is number of blocks. Remember, I told you that encoder consists of 
repeated blocks. Two is the number of those blocks. And 0 0.5 is a dropout rate. Let's investigate decoder. The transformer's decoder layer comprises multiple sublayers with residual connections and layer normalizations identical to the encoder that you saw previously. In addition, the decoder inserts a third sublayer located between the known two and known as encoder decoder attention. Here you can see a mapping of a decoder sublayers and their locations in the model. Like here we can see a feed forward neural network. Here we can see encoder decoder attention. And the first block is masked multi-headed attention. Why it's masked, we will talk soon. Each decoder layer is implemented in the transformer decoder block here that you can see to the left. You can see major components, two masked attention layers, uh, one is encoder decoder attention, another one is feed forward neural network. These sublayers employ a residual connections around them followed by layer normalization. The masked multi-headed self-attention the first sublayer of the network, its queries, keys, and values all come from the outputs of the previous decoder layer. So at every step, this first layer of the decoder receives a previous encoded token and tries to decode it. When training sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, tokens at all the positions or time steps of the output sequence are known. However, during prediction, the output sequence is unknown and generated token by token. Thus, at any decoder time step, only the generated tokens can be used for decoder self-attention. To preserve autoregression in the decoder, its masked self-attention specifies a parameter so that any query only attends to all positions in the decoder up to the query position and don't hang in into the repeated autoregression dependencies. That's why it is masked. This slide and code snippet shows how to construct the entire decoder composed of num blocks. Similar to the encoder, decoder also consists of multiple blocks. Number of blocks controlled by a parameter num blocks. Apologies, I have mistake on the slide, don't be confused. And here you can see how the transformer decoder block from the previous slide repeats in a loop according to the number of desired blocks which user asked for. Also, you can see all the components of a decoder block like at the all attentions, feed forward networks here implemented, and also embedding layer and positional encoding, very similar to the encoding layer. In the end, a fully connected layer computes the prediction for all the vocabulary size possible output tokens. Yeah, that's again, once again, that's why it's called position wise. Let's see how to train a complete transformer model, which consists of encoder and decoder. An encoder decoder transformer architecture is instantiated here. We specify that both the transformer encoder and the transformer decoder have two layers here and each of the layers have four attention heads the number of attention four number of blocks two encoder will have two blocks decoder will have two blocks each of these blocks will have four attention heads 256 is a number of hidden layers in feedforward neural network. 0 0.2 is a dropout rate. Here we call the two classes that you saw before. One is a transformer encoder, a stack of encoder layers. Another one is transformer decoder, a stack of decoder layers. And then you see how we instantiate the transformer model, passing encoder and decoder, and also some other parameters, one of which is learning rate. Then we are able to run training. It's typical PyTorch code. We set a um, number of epochs, gradient clipping parameters, and number of GPUs. And this function feed starts the training. 
So this is how you train transformers. This is how ChatGPT, Gemini, and other things were trained at the very end. Not taking into, into account thousands of GPUs, of course. But what's next? I hope you've noticed a few things in this video that weren't discussed. In particular, you saw multi-head attention, something we didn't talk about it. See these blocks, multi-headed self-attention and positional encodings. We mentioned them, but we didn't review their code. So the following video will dive deep into implementing the multi-head self-attention mechanism and positional encoding. Subscribe and stay tuned.